Fifth, welcome to CES 2024. In particular, welcome to the Bridgestone booth at CES 2024. Uh, we're going to have some panel conversations throughout the week, uh, driving some, some conversation about big topics that are in the world of mobility. Here in the West Hall, as you walk around, there's a lot in this world of advanced mobility, vehicle tech. And we're going to talk about some of the issues that are part of, of that industry, these conversations. And primarily, as uh, hopefully you get some time, if you're not from Bridgestone, who already know everything in this booth, uh, you get some time to spend learning about what's happening here in the Bridgestone booth. And that is us enabling fleets of all sizes uh, of, of different manners of industry as that industry of fleets in general, the world of fleets continues to grow, but looking to help make them more efficient, help make them more sustainable, safe, uh, and there's a lot of different ways that not just Bridgestone, but partners across the industry are helping make that happen. And so we're here with the first of our panels featuring some of our partners as we work to create better industries, better society and communities around us. That society and community, I think, is where we're going to focus today. So the topic that's a very serious one, but one that impacts the mobility industry, the transportation industry, particularly in the world of trucking. Um, but we're talking about human trafficking, right? And so here in our Bridgestone booth, actually on the other side of us here, there's a section on a nonprofit that we work with, Truckers Against Trafficking. And we're lucky enough to be joined by Esther Gotch, who is the executive director of Truckers Against Trafficking. Thanks for joining us, Esther. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, all right. And Josh Holland is also with us. He is with Bridgestone, the executive, or sorry, the VP, Vice President of Dealer Operations. We knew I was going to get this wrong as yeah, we, we were going over it. this. <laughs> From our uh, Bridgestone commercial truck group, but also a member of the board for Truckers Against Trafficking and doing work with Bridgestone on, on that behalf, right? Yes, yes. Thank you for joining us, Josh. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll start maybe by level setting a little bit sure. before we get into... TAT, Truckers Against Trafficking, maybe about the topic, right? So if Esther, you can give us a little bit of ground on the scale and the situation that we're facing in general with human trafficking. Yeah, you bet. Um, so human trafficking, probably most here have heard that term. What is it really? Um, in regards to the scope of this crime on a global level, there are over 50 million victims of human trafficking. Um, those victims garner over 150 billion in annual profits for their traffickers. This is a crime that is happening in plain sight, um, but often goes undetected, and it is in every one of our neighborhoods. So um, human trafficking has been reported in all 50 states in the United States. Um, it affects hundreds of thousands of children every year here in the United States who are forced into prostitution. Um, and so it's, it's a serious topic, it's a serious issue, it's something that um, a lot of us would prefer not to think about potentially, um, but when we dig a little deeper we see that it, it does impact um, both our communities, our workplaces, and even our individual lives and children. Yeah, it starts with awareness, right? It starts with acknowledging that the challenge, the situation is there. Uh, so you now have a group, Truckers Against Trafficking, uh, that we're all going to learn more about across the course of this week, but that Bridgestone has done some work with. Tell us a little bit about TAT. What, how did you get started? What has been the journey of this group becoming established to help fight this issue? Yeah, so um, TAT actually began back in 2009. So this year we celebrate 15 years as a yeah. nonprofit, yeah. Um, and we've grown dramatically since our humble beginnings, which uh, actually started with a mother and her, her daughters around uh, their kitchen table. Um, she read a book, learned about modern day slavery and that it still exists today and shows up here even in the United States. And so um, they had an ambitious charge that they took on as a family, which was to eradicate human trafficking worldwide. Uh, well, obviously that was a little ambitious on their part, but she leaned on some of her uh, background and foundations. And um, our founder actually grew up in El Paso, her, fam her parents ran a, a small hotel um, that mostly serviced truckers. Mm -hmm. And so it gave her this front row seat to the industry and realized when she understood the magnitude of the problem um, that perhaps truckers could be part of the solution. Yeah. And um, so that's where the idea became, what if we raised up a mobile army of transportation professionals who were educated on the crime, knew what to look for, and then could immediately report what they were seeing to law enforcement <coughs> and the authorities. And um, the results have been tremendous. You know, as um, uh, as we look back to this point, we've trained over 1.7 
uh, million industry professionals yeah. that have made thousands of calls, resulting in hundreds of cases of victim recovery. Um, so it started with truckers. We've now <laughs> expanded to the bus industry um, and other uh, uh, drivers and front run frontline employees. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what we talk about this week in the world of fleets. People have maybe one thing in their mind of what a fleet is. Maybe trucking is that primary yeah. characteristic, but fleets of all different sizes of vehicles, different number of vehicles, and if you can start somewhere, the goal is just to keep expanding that network, right? Because the more right. people we get that awareness, it can start to expand the reach, and that's what you need is the participation, right? Uh, if there's some people walking around, we do have a couple of seats up front if you'd like to take, uh, take a little bit off your feet. There's a lot of walking at CES. You're more than welcome to join us here for the conversation. Um, but we talk, uh, as Esther does, about expanding this network and how TAT has grown from the small beginnings to the big network that we just need to keep getting more people involved. She noted an army of partners, right, helping collaborate. Josh, I guess Bridgestone would be part of that army of partners, so to speak. Yes. Um, so maybe a little bit about why, I, I guess we can all assume, hey, Bridgestone makes tires that go on trucks and other vehicles. They're in that industry. But maybe why is it important for Bridgestone to be part of something like this? And how do more primarily industry partners make an impact in something like this? Yeah, so obviously it's important for Bridgestone because we talk about being a a company that serves society to, to improve, make improvements. Yeah. It's not just about running our business. And so when you want to do that, you lead an example in these sort of partnerships. And so it just makes sense when you think about this topic. And again, as Esther pointed out, how big of a topic it, or an issue it really is that most people aren't aware. And you tie it to the transportation industry. Well, our partnerships and, and the breadth of expansion that we can bring to that, it really makes sense that Bridgestone partner with with TAT, which we're already seeing success in how we grow partnerships through Bridgestone's relationships and feeding those back into, into the TAT organization. So extremely important, I think, from that standpoint and the role we can play. And then getting other organizations and other partners in, involved, you, you use the word awareness. And awareness is really what combating this issue is all about. Most people aren't aware of so many details that, as Esther said, could be happening right in front of them. Yeah and you just don't know. So, you know, the more we can help just grow the awareness and really build that saying of, you know, you see something, you say something, you've got to know what you're looking for and you've got to be more aware. So our partners expand that and that's the number one priority right now. Yeah, so. I think a lot of when you talk to people, Esther, like the stories are gripping, right? I mean, this we talk about the seriousness of this situation. We want to talk a little bit about the role, like we're at the Consumer Electronics Show, the role that data plays in these things that are going to help you be able to expand the network, get more people involved, share more information. But the baseline stories that you share are of these individuals that are impacted by this. When you talk to partners, when you try to raise awareness, you come talk to people like Bridgestone, what are some of the, the stories that are told that really kind of pull people in? Because I'd have to imagine maybe Josh, then you, it's not hard to get on board when you have the ability to impact and you hear what needs to be impacted. Yeah, when you hear the details, it's really hard to not want to be involved. I mean, just plain and simple. Yeah. I don't know if, how do you approach, I guess, some of those conversations to help the stories become very real to people, yeah. right? Yeah, it's very important to humanize this issue. You know, uh, we see a lot of Hollywood films maybe that have um, paint human trafficking in a certain light. But in reality, when, when you understand what's going on, oftentimes when we're speaking to, to large groups like this or others, um, people actually have experiences in their own life, mm. whether it's their own kids being maybe vulnerable online or whether in their workplace, uh, whether it's a driver who said, yeah, I, I, I did see that individual now that you articulate what I might maybe should be looking for. Um, so we hear from survivors, we hear from law enforcement, and then we hear from our partners who are out in the world on the front lines um, seeing those individuals that are experiencing vulnerability and exploitation, maybe before they would have closed their curtain and said, ah, it's not my business. No. And so what we really work to do, and, and partners like Bridgestone help amplify that message, is just get trained. Get trained to recognize the signs, what it might look like in your sphere, in your uh, networks, and in your everyday life, whether you're uh, a, a school bus driver, a truck driver, a truck stop personnel, um, you never know when you may encounter a potential victim, and so have those tools ready uh, in your toolbox to be able to respond um, and potentially save a life. Yeah, 
when we talk about the tools in the toolbox, it's a lot of what we're showcasing here at Bridgestone, right? And, and I mentioned the data part of this. We see all of the different points now in the industry and in our technologies, Josh, where we're capturing data. It's just as important for a nonprofit group like you that, to get as much data as possible to help to expand the network, to raise the awareness. How do you evolve as a nonprofit group? How do you explore this world of data and what data points are you looking for from across the industry that can help make a difference? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. It's a great question <laughs> because it's a major challenge in this yeah. work. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. For one, uh, no one has been tracking consistently um, at a national level. Uh, what human trafficking looks like or those cases. Um, oftentimes victims don't identify as victims until much later in their healing journey. Um, they don't raise their hand and say, hey, I'm a victim of human trafficking. And so, um, and then law enforcement often, um, even when they're working these cases, they might, may not be tracking that data. They might may not know that they're interacting with a potential victim because there may be another slew of crimes that they're focused on rather than the trafficking. Um, and they may not be sharing that data with other, other jurisdictions. So it is a major challenge, um, and we're so thrilled today <laughs> to be launching some, uh, some growth areas for TAT where we're looking to really yeah. be able to collect some of our own data. Uh, related to human trafficking out on the roads. Yeah, one of the things that you're talking about is a new app, right? Yep. A mobile app that is uh, gonna help you uh, do more of these things with data collection. But I guess, what should people know about it? And, and I think we all, again, hear truckers against trafficking. Well, I'm not a trucker, right. but it's this whole idea of the awareness beyond just this one industry to see something, say something, be a part. So how can anybody who might be here listening play a part in something like that? Yeah, yeah. you bet. So um, just like I said, we started in trucking. We now work with a number of different industry sectors um, across energy, across um, the bus industry, across trucking, as well as the general public with law enforcement, even state agencies and public sector partners. And so um, with our new app, some of the key functions are uh, to really be able to customize it to the user. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a um, bus driver, I can be looking at some of the key indicators and training resources for me specifically to help me understand the intersections between my j everyday job and human trafficking. Um, and so there's a lot of different audiences we're reaching with our app. And then of course, just, you know, all of us are on our phones, we're in our apps every day. And so to be able to have that information at your fingertips, no matter what your day job looks like, um, many folks uh, of our partners have actually, you know, reported back times incidents where they've reported human trafficking and it hasn't actually been on the road. It's been while they've been out to dinner with their children mm -hmm. or uh, traveling for work, uh, you know, moving from the hotel to the um, convention center, wherever it may be, um, a really equipping individuals with the resources to be able to successfully identify and report human trafficking. Yeah. Hopefully everybody can take a little bit from this as they learn more about the situation. Um, for those that are just kind of walking up, walking by, we're here in the CES uh, Bridgestone booth for 2024. We're talking about uh, human trafficking, a serious issue in the world of transportation, world of mobility, and what is being done in the industry to help combat uh, this situation in particular. Um, Josh, we, we talk about all the technology that we've got here, and you're obviously talking to our, our customers, our dealers about that stuff. But then there's this other aspect that we're an extension of the education platform for TAT. What are some of the conversations that we've had, whether it's with the people we work with that are out in, in, on the roads in the industry, or what has Bridgestone maybe already done now to help expand that education? Well, part of expanding the education, one thing that we did first was we launched our own anti-human trafficking policy uh, last year in which in North America, we had over, uh, close to 30,000 teammates take that training. So step one, we talk about awareness and education. Mm -hmm. We then held a, a coalition build in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, near our headquarters here in, in North America, and have leveraged our learnings and our work. You know, we've shared our policy. We've allowed other businesses and partners to use that policy to jumpstart launching their own so that they can train their teammates. And then as Esther said, the, the data is a challenge. We, we yeah. talked about this a number of times and, and the more that we can integrate our partners and we talk about integrating our solutions, data integration is just a key factor in, in, in so much that we're talking yeah. about on this topic. And, and the more we can do that with our partners and share information through the partnerships, I think that's key in us driving that. 
And outside of that, we've, we've talked about leveraging you know, our own solutions like Azuga, other, other partners that have telematics and things that are ways that we can report and have reporting built in to start capturing data. Because really it's, data's one thing, but we can't capture it, so we don't have data to look at. You know? And so we've got to look at how we better capture data. And then is there, there's probably the other side of it is maybe we start getting this flow of data coming in, what do we do with the data, yeah. and how do we make it usable to, to be able to make an impact in those different ways? So there's a lot to, to uncover, but seemingly a lot of opportunity. I, is, I mean, I'd have to imagine you walk around this place and there's a lot of people that you'd like to talk to and, and explore how they could help you unlock different things and explore. Like, when you think about what CES is, and we talk about, even in our booth, the data that's flowing and the technologies out there, what are you looking for maybe in other partners who can maybe also help you to a certain degree? Interesting question. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, to the point of, of, of data and why it's important for human trafficking advocates who are working to prevent it, um, is because it helps us understand the crime better, right? It helps us, uh, you know, adjust our approaches to those solutions. Um, and so I would say within the anti-trafficking field right now, we're at a moment where we're really looking for some creative, innovative solutions to um, better capturing data, both, you know, at a national level, at a global level, and then even at a more localized level, because, um, you know, it's important for the boots on the ground to be a network that can actually serve um, victims and survivors once they are recovered. So, um, you know, when I, th there's so much that when you say there would be a challenge if the flow of data came, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> we'll take we would that. know that's what good, to do that's with that. That's the same thing. Yeah. Like, great problem good to have. Problem. Yeah, yeah we have problem. lots of ideas for that, but it really is, um, you know, it's it's a nuanced issue, and so there's not really a one size fits all. That's the challenge in, I think, um, you know, innovating. But here I am. I'm not the tech person. You all are. So uh, it's a great opportunity for us to hopefully explore some of those partnerships yeah. that might um, create some of those new solutions. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think a lot of what CES is about in general is what's next, right? What's the mm -hmm. future look like? What's coming? We're going to end a lot of our different conversations this week with about what's next. So you launch a new app. I think immediately in the near term, what's next? I think Thursday of this week is a Human Trafficking Awareness Day, right? Yeah. So giving us a chance, everybody, to reflect on the calendar and maybe what we've learned or, or increasing our own awareness and study of that. Um, but maybe we'll, we'll start with Josh and then work into Esther. Maybe what's next for Bridgestone in this space, how we will continue to try to be a part of the, the positive impact and, and fighting the challenge. And then Esther, we'll go to you. And what's next for maybe Tat in the, the larger industry? Yeah. yeah I would say what's next, one, is our continued relationship that we have. And, and in the last year that I've been fortunate enough to have the seat on the board uh, you know, with TAT, we've really tried to bring in our partners and bring in the other ways that we can support the organization, not just financially, but more so as a real partnership collectively yeah. on how we grow. I think what's next is that we continue to do that. We've already started the year off, I think, strong leveraging Bridgestone partners to help us take TAT to, to another level. And they need an army to do that as well. And so being able to help do that, I think that's huge for us, uh, as well as continuing, you know, to our financial, uh, you know, support is, is going to continue. And, uh, you know, we'll, ha we'll happily in increase that slightly this year and then look to do so more in the future. But that partnership build and that overall army that it will take to, yeah. to uh, tackle this matter is really key for us this year. And that includes our commercial network, because yep. we talk about boots on the ground, we, we want to get as many of those boots moving in, in our direction, I would say, this year. So that's that's a key focus. We, we meet quarterly. We've had great support through the Bridgestone team on, on other items this year, so we'll just continue that march. Keep building, yep. right? What's next for TAT, maybe for, for the industry and for the, the challenge at hand? Yep. Yeah, so certainly our app is a big push. We want to get that in the hands of as many individuals as we can. We see that as a great opportunity. But, um, you know, where TAT started, we've always specialized in niche specific training for mm -hmm. different frontline workers, um, like your drivers, your truck stop employees, your ticket personnel. Um, but through partnerships like Bridgestone and our many other partnerships, we recognize the opportunity there, right? Bridgestone employs hundreds of thousands of people who uh, move about their day, who, uh, you know, I know uh, with Bridgestone where they live, work, and play, right? 
human trafficking shows up where each of us live, work, and play. And so how can TAT um, build on some of our training resources for a more corporate audience, yeah. um, for folks who are traveling and staying in hotels, coming to conferences like this, equip them also with the tools they need to be able to make a difference and be part of the solution. Um, Josh mentioned their uh, policy that they've adopted. That's another big push with all of our partners mm -hmm. is helping not only guide on the training and provide training for their employees, but then also backing that up with policies and protocols that fight this crime at a more fundamental and um, as part of their core corporate values. That's something we get really excited about and there's a lot of opportunity for us to continue to exploit that with our partners going forward. And I would add to that, to roll out a policy and take that step, there's really not a cost to it. So when you think about asking people to get involved, it, it's just taking action, yeah. not necessarily taking on an expense to do that. So mm -hmm. it's just take that first step. Yeah. yeah, We talk all the time about what's good for society is good for business, is, is how we look at it at Bridgestone. And we're here talking about all these ways to capture data and all these tools. And these things are, are really what matters to businesses. But then if you could take that and make an impact on society or communities in a really positive way, that's what really matters, right? So, so we'll keep talking uh, about this topic. If you want to talk to Esther, she's actually here in our Bridgestone booth. We have some, some areas for truckers against trafficking to continue the dialogue. Uh, we'll be having some other conversations here throughout the week. Each morning, grab a coffee, come on by if you're coming back through. Uh, we're talking about autonomous driving and safety in the uh, mobility industry tomorrow with uh, Kodiak, an autonomous trucking company, and Azuga, a fleet management company. Uh, and then on Thursday, we'll have Penske, here with us, uh, as well as uh, some reps from Bridgestone, talking about sustainability and efficiency and productivity uh, in the fleet industry. So we encourage you to join us. We hope that this was informative. Josh and Esther, thank you for your time. Uh, and feel free to come up, ask some questions, and continue the conversation. Enjoy CES, everybody. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks so much.